Kathy N. Davidson, The New Education, How to Revolutionize the University to Prepare Students for a World in Flux. In The New Education, Kathy N. Davidson delves into the history and evolution of the American higher education system and questions its effectiveness in today's rapidly changing world. This summary explores the formation of universities by Charles Eliot, the integration of technology in the classroom, and the pitfalls of standardized testing. Key themes include the importance of teaching students to be adaptable and self-sufficient learners, the dangers of overemphasis on technology, and innovative approaches from community colleges and other higher learning facilities. The Evolution of American College Education Charles Eliot was instrumental in shaping the structure of American college education. He visited European universities and integrated their concepts of academic freedom and standardized curriculum into American colleges. He also established majors, minors, degree requirements, grades, general education, electives, graduate schools, financial aid, scholarships, entrance exams, tenure, sabbaticals, school rankings, optional prayer, and much more. Eliot led a movement that brought business and management theories into the design of the educational experience. However, the skills students require today differ from those needed in the 19th century. The higher education process needs to evolve to cater to our modern lives and prepare students to become independent and demanding researchers who can use an array of creative, critical, and computational methods to solve problems. Technology and Education Using technology in classrooms without updating teaching methods is limiting the full potential of education. Despite resistance to newer approaches throughout history, integrating technology can enhance learning experiences by shifting away from traditional lecture hall lessons. While some see technology as a distraction, it can be beneficial when used properly. Teaching students to utilize technology for research and learning prepares them to become better users of future technologies. In a digital age where information is readily available, classrooms can cater to other aspects of learning such as analyzing and critically evaluating material. The modern university's focus on specialized knowledge production enables hierarchical structures, but social media's rise has allowed students to contribute to the world in ways that matter. Now, more than ever, students can develop meaningful research and knowledge for a wider audience. The Overhyped Promise of Online Education The promise of revolutionizing education with technology hasn't lived up to expectations. Massive open online courses, MOOCs, were launched with the hopes of providing accessible education to lift people out of poverty. However, fewer than 4% of students complete the courses. Colleges are spending billions on technology, often at the expense of faculty and course offerings. Technology is important, but institutions should prioritize deep, integrated learning and analysis across disciplines. We can't forget that teachers still teach. Innovative Leadership in Community Colleges Gail Mello, president of City University of New York's LaGuardia Community College has established Bossy Moms program to support the students who have a 2.5 GPA to transition into professional life smoothly. The program provides a stipend for professional attire, admittance to cultural events, and transportation fare cards. The President's Fellows also have access to separate professional training programs. Community colleges accept any high school graduate and provide remedial education to support those with inadequate secondary public education. Over half of the college-going students enroll in community colleges, and earning an associate's degree can increase annual income by $5,400. Community colleges also accept students with criminal histories and provide educational programs inside prisons. Middle-class cultural literacy is essential to move students out of poverty by enabling them to fit into the careers they seek. Community colleges need to adapt their approach to the ever-changing educational needs of today's students, making leadership and problem-solving critical aspects of their approach. Engaging Students Through Active Learning The book summary discusses how active learning strategies are replacing the traditional lecture-centered approach in many community colleges. 
Professors like Joshua Belknap at Borough of Manhattan Community College use techniques like having students share features of their native tongues to build their confidence and encourage intellectual contributions. Mastery learning, as promoted by Vanderbilt College professor Derek Bruff, focuses on building on already known information and letting students figure out the solutions for themselves. The summary also highlights how grades limit student learning and formative feedback in the form of comments can be more effective in helping students improve their skills. Origins and Flaws in the U.S. Grading System The U.S. grading system traces its origins to the factory productivity measurements and the classification of eggs by size. However, it is flawed in its application to student learning and reinforces stereotypes. The letter grade system was first established by Mount Holyoke, but criticism arose for making E a failing grade. Sir Francis Galton proposed the bell curve to control degrees of excellence, supporting his belief in eugenics. Further, standardized IQ tests developed by psychologists Robert Yerkes and Edward Lee Thorndike were flawed and maintained stereotypes. The use of technology and interpersonal interaction is key to good pedagogy. The U.S. grading system that we know today has its roots in factories and egg classification. However, it does not apply well to student learning and risks perpetuating stereotypes. Mount Holyoke established the letter grade system, but criticism surfaced when E, a potential grade for excellence, was used as a failing grade. The bell curve, created by Sir Francis Galton to establish degrees of excellence, was used to promote eugenics by advocating for the procreation of superior aristocrats and proposing sterilization for the lower classes. The standardized IQ tests developed by psychologists Robert Yerkes and Edward Lee Thorndike were used to identify students needing attention, but also tested over one million recruits for the U.S. military and were flawed in maintaining gender and ethnic stereotypes. To promote good pedagogy, the use of technology and interpersonal interaction is key. As we learn, we all assist and learn from each other. Therefore, the education system must carefully consider its methods of assessment and measurement to promote learning. Rethinking Education in the Digital Age As the digital age continues to transform the job market, there is a growing need to rethink the purpose of education and how we can equip students with the skills they need to thrive in an unpredictable future. While job training is essential, it should not come at the expense of intellectual development. Georgetown University's Red House promotes rebundling, which requires students to produce transdisciplinary research projects. The Red House believes in partnership and diversity as crucial factors in preparing students for the global economy. Silicon Valley executives need to address the impact of their technological solutions and workplace automation on students' futures. The future must prioritize collaboration, analysis, and synthesis of divergent disciplines as a fundamental cornerstone of education. Through diversity and innovation, we can redefine education for the future. Overall, the new education serves as a thought-provoking examination of the American higher education system and its ability to meet the needs of students in a constantly evolving world. The book emphasizes the importance of a student-centered, collaborative, and integrated approach to learning over traditional methods. With a focus on rethinking existing structures and strategies, such as the reliance on standardized testing and the role of technology in the educational process, Davidson challenges us to consider a new vision of higher education that can prepare students for success in a diverse, globalized, and complex world.